It's hard to comprehend how anyone could be so greedy or so cruel. Dr. Helfred Sartori claims he can cure terminal cancer. It isn't true, of course. But what makes Dr. Sartori's scam truly despicable is that he doesn't just empty out his victims' bank accounts. The last days of life are painful hell for his patients as they're dosed up on powerful chemicals that poison their systems. His treatment has already failed to save 24 Australians. And yet it seems nothing can be done to stop him. He was the doctor of last resort. The doctor who promised Australian cancer patients a miracle. How do you feel about Dr Sartori? I think he's a madman. An absolute madman. But Dr. Helfred Sartori's alternative cancer treatment saved no one. Absolutely horrible to think that we'd taken Sandra on this journey of hope and as it turned out that there's probably never any real hope there at all. Those hopes were shattered over two horrendous weeks behind the closed doors of this suburban Perth home that would end with the deaths of five people and spark a coronial inquest into Dr Sartori and his treatment. You are preying on incredibly ill people who are desperately looking for something and you haven't been able to give them anything. You gave them death. That's true. I said, well, anyway, uh, I, I believe... Uh... For nearly 30 years, Dr Sartori, an Austrian-trained GP, has pushed the benefits of his cesium treatment for cancer patients. Patients were charged up to $40,000 for his chemical cocktail which includes cesium chloride, ozone, latrile, also known as B17, and an industrial solvent called DMSO, all prohibited substances in Australia without medical exemptions. Don't you tell them you can cure it? No, uh, the word, I, I don't ever use the word cure. Recover? Completely? Well, if you don't use the word cure, recover? 100% recovery? Permanent? Recovery? Don't you use those words? Recovery from, from the present condition, yes. How many patients have been cured by your treatments? Um, I really cannot say. You say 10,000. Uh, yeah, it's my, it's my best estimate. I've not yet seen one. Um, yeah, any no, of those 10,000 no, no. patients say, yeah, that well, no. treatment's fantastic. It saved my life. Why aren't they yeah, coming they, forward? They, they, they are telling it in the underground. It's just not true, and you know it. OK, well... It was that promise of a cure that drew 69-year-old Pia Bosso to Dr Sartori six years ago. Her niece, Sandra Hoffman, says Pia was told the treatment would destroy the cancerous tumours in her thyroid. This was going to be a cure. Yeah, cure. They were the words that, that she used. They were the words that other people there told me as well, that this treatment has helped other people, that they've seen it with their own eyes. 53-year-old Sandra McCarty was also promised the treatment would combat her breast cancer. Her husband, Jared, and daughters, Natalie and Renee, were encouraged by the apparent evidence that Dr. Sartori offered. When we looked into this program, it clearly showed that there was a, a, this cutting edge treatment available through a leading international cancer specialist. It seemed legitimate enough to have a crack. We were virtually told that it was a fantastic miracle cure that the medical, the pharmaceutical companies didn't want you to know about because it would put them out of business. We were told that it wasn't authorised and that um, we would have to be very quiet about it. 
You were not to let on. No, no. The concoction of uh, chemicals, as I understand, that uh, treated the Australian patients were made up of ingredients that uh, are not legally able to be obtained in Australia. Where no, no, they, they are legally obtained in Australia. These are paint strippers, solvents? Uh, these yeah, are yeah, sure, they can use it for that too. But uh, they are every veterinarian and every athlete in, in the United States uses it. But you're not supposed to use it in humans. You, every athlete. Uh, athletes are not humans for you. Sandra McCarty and Pia Bosso were among a group of patients who, in 2005, made a pilgrimage to Perth for the cesium treatment. They expected a hospital standard clinic supervised by an Australian doctor and nurses. What did you walk into? It was just a home. Basically, it was a living room with IVs and buckets to catch vomit and a few portable toilets that we then would need to. This was no clinic? No. <laughs> Within a fortnight, Sandra and Pia were dead. They were among four patients to die at the house over four consecutive days. A fifth died just over a month later. When did you decide that this was not going to be a good outcome? I think um, probably the second last day I, I thought things were had gone too far, uh, and then I think the treatment the last day was very, very hard for, for Sandra. I could tell that she was really trying really hard to accept the horrible things that were happening to her body, and she said, Nat, they're killing me, they're killing me, Nat. It's hard to believe that what went on inside this house could happen in the 21st century. Cancer sufferers were subjected to what was nothing short of torture. They were plied with dangerous chemicals that caused severe vomiting and diarrhoea. Some would be so sick they'd slip into unconsciousness. In the end, as one nurse working here told the coroner, the treatment room resembled a war zone. Innocent, vulnerable, trusting people, it seems, were treated as little more than human guinea pigs. It was a house filled with, with very, very sick people and um, a lot of moaning, a lot of crying and um, it was just horrible. The treatment was overseen by two nurses one of them, Simone Fazy, who was unregistered in Western Australia. But Dr Sartori was nowhere to be seen. Unbeknown to his patients, he was banned from entering Australia. He's also been jailed three times, twice in America and once in Thailand in relation to his treatments. Do you tell every patient I have been jailed for incompetence and I'm not licensed. Do you tell them that? You were absolutely, absolutely. There isn't a patient that, that doesn't know that. Dr Sartori told me that he, he said absolutely every patient knew of his criminal history. Not one little bit of it did we know. You lied about your criminal history to try and get licensed in Australia. Honesty isn't one of your big assets, is it? As I said, I've made many mistakes. In the absence of Dr Sartori, the patients placed their faith in Perth GP, Dr Alexandra Boyd, who owned and lived in the house where they were treated. 
how often would you see the patients? I think I saw most of them at least two, three times during the time of the treatment. You didn't see them daily at all? No. You, you had... But this, they knew that right from the beginning that I wouldn't be seeing them daily, Liz. I, I don't know whether they did. Yes, they did. did. They were well aware that I was, had a very busy schedule and that I would not be overseeing their treatment. Dr Boyd was participating in this treatment. Oh, no doubt participated and was participating and knew she was going to be participating all along. It would be hard for her to argue that she didn't really know what was going on. I would have thought, would have thought, yes. Yeah, naturally she knew what was happening. I mean, that uh, they were, uh, she knew naturally that they were treated with cesium. Dr. Boyd's name is on indemnity documents signed by some patients. She was paid more than $38,000. Yet this experienced doctor claims she left the care of these very ill patients to Dr. Sartori's unregistered nurse, Simone Fazy. You had no idea of the, the compounds, the chemicals that were being Not intravenously really. uh, fed into the patients? No. Did you not say to any of these nurses, what the hell is going on? What is in that stuff? No, because Simone told me she had done this over several years with Dr. Satori and knew exactly what was going to happen. You were in a position to say enough because it couldn't be done without you. No, that's not true. They still would have continued on whether I was there or not. But it was happening in your house. The day before she died, Sandra McCarty was taken to Fremantle Hospital. But even then, Dr Sartori's people concealed the truth about what had been going on. Simone Fazy, who was the nurse, she introduced herself as Simone Watson, uh, our private, um, my mum's private nurse from Victoria, and she told me to say that if they asked who the doctor is, don't say Dr Sartori, but she asked me to call him Dr Contreras or someone from, from Mexico. So she, you know, there was, she was I felt they were, jump, they were jumping ship. They were jumping ship. And they took, they took them to different hospitals in, over Perth so that presumably they wouldn't be found out. So you know, their intentions, their responsibilities is questionable, highly questionable. The ridiculousness is that, is that they still continued treatment with my auntie and others after people had died. So they still continued you know, and they weren't told. At no stage when you were getting messages, when you were talking to your nurses who were treating these patients in Perth, did you think to yourself, I'm killing them, I need to stop? Oh no, absolutely not. Nausea, diarrhoea, sometimes also vomiting. This is uncomfortable, without any doubt, but it's not a severe side effect. As soon as this is over, it is over. There's nothing remaining in the body. Do you believe these patients suffered unnecessarily because of this treatment? Looking back, they most probably did. Do you believe the treatment may have contributed to the deaths of some of these patients? No. I think when I look back uh, at what these patients had, I think in most cases it was just the cancer that killed them. All of them suddenly died within days of each other from their cancer? It's quite possible. Are you serious? Yes. Australian authorities believe they know of 25 patients who received Dr Sartori's treatment. 24 have died and the 25th still has cancer. Dr Sartori is now back in Austria and still peddling his wares on the internet.
Dr. Satori, can you not see that you're out of step with everybody else and you think everybody else is wrong and you're right? No, I, it has nothing to do with me. It's, and, a, it's and like a delusional is, person speaking. Yeah, but, yeah, it has nothing to do with no, me. No, but, but if what you th Anyone, believe is... I, I guess I don't get why you don't understand why other doctors just think you are crackers. They do. For the families, it's been a harrowing journey. They're still dealing with the pain of losing someone they loved too soon, and anger, knowing that none of this should have happened. From a, a personal perspective, I have a lot of guilt because I wasn't in Perth. And I, I didn't get to say goodbye. So I never got to tell her I love her again. I don't know that I'll ever forgive myself for that. She was a gorgeous, private, dignified lady. And for her death to be such a circus is it's disloyal to her memory. Yeah, she was robbed of that dignity, wasn't she? That's, that's, that's what should never have happened. That's right. That's been a hard part, really, really hard. These are strong people, I think, that wanted to live and that were prepared to endure a lot of pain. No one is standing up and saying that there was anything wrong with their treatment. It's just extremely sad and that's, I think somebody needs to be made accountable. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.